you will talk yourself out of your dream because you aren't prepared or it's not pretty enough or it's not clear enough or the aesthetic isn't giving enough. You will literally talk yourself out of the dream that could change your life today. Continuing to wait on somebody else, continuing to wait on a team, a team to do what? Put your phone on a tripod and hit record a team for what? Obviously, when you grow to a certain level, you get a team to help things become more convenient and easier. We didn't start with a team. Even when I joined at episode, I think, 50, like we're sitting here, the control board's right here, right on the side. And Dave's like, okay, you ready? Yep, ready. Okay, Psh. we wait a couple of seconds because that's the trim time. And then we go. <laughs> and we had like two cameras at that time, one on him, one on me. It was like, actually, it was. Was it just one? one at that time? It was one. We eventually graduated. We were we were in the same <laughs> shot. One no angles. That that little switch that you just saw. Do, go back, Reese. That that that. Go, come back, come back, Reese. This. It wasn't this. It was not this. It was one camera, perfectly positioned to get both of us from a far enough angle, but close enough so you could see us. And guess what? We had to get up. Press record, David's on the machine, and then eventually a Javon came, and then eventually a Reese came, and then eventually a Zell came. But if we never started doing it on our own, nobody came. Nobody comes. No opportunity is created. No authority is established. No influence is made. None of this could happen if we didn't run to the camera, press record, run back to our seat, and just start. And so Welcome us. to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast. How are you all today that are listening? Donnie, how are you? I am feeling quite interrupted. I'm feeling unseen, David. <laughs> ah, you don't feel seen? I don't feel seen. Explain, explain what happened and why you feel the way you feel. So every episode before we get started, we usually are having some type of silly conversation with the audience that's in here because we got a live studio audience. <laughs> And we're usually just, you know, shooting the stuff with them. And that's what I was in the middle of doing. And David decided that he was exhausted by my mindless activity and my thoughtless conversation. And he decided to start the podcast. And I was going somewhere with this. I was I as was long going as you somewhere. knew it was mindless. It was mindless. But I think that's the part that helps everybody in here connect with us. They like they like the mindless stuff that we start with. And then you get them on the back end and you hit them with that. Aha. You ever been on a date and the person was mindless and you're like, oh, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's my man, my man, my man. That's my man, my man, my man. <laughs> yeah, I actually do enjoy. I was just telling somebody that I actually do enjoy mindless, thoughtless activity. And what I mean by that is things that I can just do and I don't even have to think about it. Like, Watching TV for me isn't mindless and thoughtless. And I've realized that's why I probably don't like watching TV because it's the struggle of like, OK, are we Netflixing or Huluing or Amazoning today? Like, what are we doing? And then you got to search through all of those shows and movies and new releases yeah. and read and descriptions like I actually have to think about that yeah. showing up for brunch, however. I don't have to think about that. I love a good mindless brunch. Yeah, no, nah, but I don't think your br brunches be mindless, though. You're always well, talking about. Success and progression, and you know it's a lifestyle for you. And here's what: Have you watched? Have you started watching Suits? So I just said, see, this is why I don't feel heard or seen because I just said that I don't really like to watch TV. No, you didn't say you don't like to watch TV. You said you don't like the process of having to find something good, which is why I don't really like to watch TV. But if I can help you skip over the the if part, if you of can make it mindless good, for me, I'm making it mindless. Okay. Go watch, start watching Suits. Okay. Well, you would really appreciate it. I would like it. Yes. So I love, it? A, I love on, a good man. crime scene. I love a good legal. I love it. I'm going to love it. Suits. Okay. Oh my God. It's legal. It's legal. Yes. Okay. And it's, a, it's about attorneys that are getting deals done. Mm. And Harvey Specter is my hero. Mm. You know that if I weren't, if I were doing something... In my, in, if I could choose what to do, like if I had to stop doing entrepreneurship at this point in my life, I would go to law school and be a lawyer. Really? Yeah. I found a, um, I just did uh, Pinky's American Sesh. Mm -hmm. So I was going through my mom's baby album of me looking for a baby photo. And I found this uh, school project that I did in the fourth grade, fourth or fifth grade. And it says who you'll be in 20 years. Like you had to draw yourself out, draw a picture of what you look like. 
and what your personal life, your professional life and all of that stuff look like in 20 years. And I'm not doing any of those things, but <laughs> <laughs> I was in the fifth grade. Um, I looked the way. So it's so funny because I drew a picture of myself and I got this jet black hair with a bang and I'm wearing red lipstick and I usually wear red lipstick. But I said that I would be a lawyer. I also said that I would have a husband and a house with a white picket fence, two kids and two dogs. I got one kid, no husband, one dog. So maybe I'm halfway there. I don't know. Maybe it's to be continued. Condo, no house, no picket fence around a condo. Condo, no house. There is no picket fence around the condo. Just husband. no husband. None of that. I did not mm. affirm properly in the fifth grade. I probably didn't really know what I was doing. Anyway. Here's the crazy thing, though, because if you had all that stuff, you'd have called it manifestation. I would have. I would have. Which means manifestation doesn't work? or No, that is not true. That is not true. You're, anyway, we're not going there today. Yes, we, we are. are. We, are <laughs> not, we are not talking about how 100% of people are manifesting anyway. They're just not being intentional about it. We're right. not talking about the fact that you sit and meditate on an idea is going to bring it closer and closer to you. We're not talking about that. We're not, we are not going to prove to people that manifestation and meditation is real by just sharing with them that when you sit there and you're focused on those bills that are outstanding, you get more bills that are outstanding and you're mm. spending more and more time living paycheck to paycheck because mm. you're still focused and manifest meditating on these bills. We're not going to talk about how you're manifesting more of that. We're not doing that. What we are talking about though Go ahead, Donnie. Come on, Donnie. Is, Tell uh, me off. <laughs> we're, we're not going there in this episode. The point that I was making was that in fifth grade, I said I would be a lawyer. And I've been told, like, all my, I'm, a, I'm a debate cl queen. I was on the debate club, the debate team, high school, college, all of that. And I love getting to the bottom of things. I love proving theory and logic. And I would make a really, really great attorney. I, I think, think so. many women would. Many women would make great attorneys. No, I think so. I don't mm -hmm. think so. Um, I always wanted to play basketball, be a basketball player or a rapper. You're really good at basketball, right? Uh, eh, depends on the day. Hmm. I'm a little washed now. I'm just getting older. But. Were you ever unwashed? Like, were you ever Yeah, yeah no, I used to be really good. I used to be really good. Uh, because that's all I did, though. Like, my whole world, it's so interesting. Um, as a kid, my whole world and it's, it's, wow, it's interesting. Like, I made my whole world about the sport. So every day after school, I'm playing basketball. When I'm not playing basketball, I'm like trading basketball cards. And when I'm not trading, that was the fun outside. That was going outside. When my parents said, hey, go outside. I don't think, y'all don't let y'all kids outside no more, right? I don't let mine outside. Mm. But we used to just like, they used to just send us outside, right? Because I don't think there was weirdos back in the day. Maybe there, why? I wonder. We have better, we have better communities, really. Van. Yeah, that white van. There was a, there were less, that less white, white van been a thing. <laughs> there was less white vans back then. Oh, but um, so so look, if 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 you would have followed me, you would you would know that everything that I was about was basketball. Like I wanted swingman jerseys. Like I was, you know, wearing. Hat, basketball hats. I had a life-size poster of Allen Iverson on my wall. Um, mm. My dad would make me like dribble up and down the street with my left hand because I was right-handed. He knows I always go to my right. When we, when they was like, "Yo, let's go outside," the objective was to play basketball. It wasn't like just random play. It was like we're gonna play basketball. So my whole world down to trading cards and all that kind of stuff was just basketball, and I got really, really good at it. Yeah, got, a, got good at the sport. But then my my uh, my world became about like making money and being cool. So I got into this rap culture and believe it or not, I was a good rapper. DJ Infamous was actually my DJ. We had like this little crew, my man Ward, DJ Infamous and myself. I was really good. And I was like winning rap battles on the yard at school. I used to battle for sure. Believe I, I have the footage, okay? <laughs> You'll never see it, but I have the footage. But my whole world was about that and I became good at it. But because that was my world, all the other stuff that came along with it, like um, selling weed, because I, I was rapping about it. And then I, I was talking about like doing a bid. And then I went, actually went to jail. Not for long, it was a few hours, but I was scared straight. Did you ever I was talk, scared straight. Did you ever talk about murder? Absolutely, I shot people in the face all the time. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm talking about big guns. Big one. I, I was just... <laughs> 
<laughs> I sold so much cocaine in my raps, it was crazy. Mm. I was a kingpin. You were Chapo. But my Davo. But it was crazy because that was that was the focus. And as I focused on it, the things grew. But then uh, I just kind of get in, got into this entrepreneurship world. As you focused on it, things grew. Manifestation or I work towards it? Uh, it's both. You are meditating on it so much. I never mu meditate yes, on Yes, listen. Drugs. I just Meditating is, is, guys, 100% of the people that exist that are old enough to think are meditating on an idea. If you sit and you think about Look at the definition. anything, it's simply sitting in silence and thinking on an idea or ideas. You meditated on those ideas. You didn't realize what it was at the time, but it actually was. And that's why what you I focused on expanded. You absolutely closed your eyes and said, man, I'm a killer. I want that deal. Put me in front of Diddy, son. You absolutely did close <laughs> your I eyes. And I did rap in front of Jazzy Faye, and he liked my bars. We were outside of Applebee's in Huntsville, Alabama. I will call him on the phone right now. He probably doesn't remember. I probably, Okay. But, I mean, he remembers going to Huntsville, Alabama and going to Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I did. I did. And he gave me a guy's name. His, his name was Ghost or something like that. Ghost or uh, what's another word for a ghost? No. I think his name might have been Ghost. Or it's, it's an S word. Spook. It was, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, so anyway, Casper. I actually think my man's name was Casper. But he gave me the guy's name. And he gave me his car. He's like, yo, hit him up. But I was just, I just, I was, just wasn't good at follow up. But meditation means the action or practice of meditating, a written or spoken discourse expressing considered thoughts on a subject. So I did meditate yeah. when I spoke rap. And you meditate every day. Before you propose to Dre, you thought about it. You, you're sitting there and you're thinking, like, what are the pros and cons? Meditate on it, though. Should I do? What is meditation? You literally just said it. It's, it's what? Consider thoughts on a subject. Yeah. Yeah. S thoughts on a subject. But you said it was like closing your eyes and all that kind of stuff. No, I never, I never said that, you did. David. I did not say that. You can meditate with your eyes opened or closed. Hey, listen in the comments. Just tell her she said that. Just rewind back. She said it. I literally just said, you said, I never closed my eyes. Because. And you said, you did, I did, I said, you did close your eyes. You never, you mean to tell me you never closed your eyes and said, put me in front of Diddy or whoever. Yes, you do. You can meditate with your eyes open or closed, whatever feels great to you. When you're daydreaming, we like to call daydreaming uh, daydreaming, but you're you're meditating on a thought or an idea. And you know that the more you focus on a thing, it expands. The more you focus on that dream car, the more you're going to start seeing your dream car more than you've ever seen that dream car before. That's real. The more you focus on your desire to uh, leave your significant other, suddenly now all of the things that's wrong with that person are highlighted at a greater level than the things that you actually like about that person, right? Like that's sure. meditation. 100% of people do it. So I want you guys in this moment, like just, just what David just did. Thank you. I'm proud of you. Thank you for being mature enough to actually look up the word. I want you right now, if you're still like, Oh, here she goes with that again, just stop and define the word. Just Google it. Meditation. What is the definition of meditation? And it's simply focused thought, whether you're speaking it or writing it, or thinking it, the end. Have you been out of the gym? Your tummy is. Go back. Re first of all. <laughs> hey, you go back a few seconds. Uh, any, so you, hey, you saw. Look at the little side. The, I've always I'm, had. And I'm only, say, I'm only saying this for motivation because I know you want to be. In, you know. He's upset because of last manifest. week's episode. Anyway, <laughs> let, because I want to manifest. Anyway, anyway. Uh, okay, so okay, yes. So the things that I focused on grew. Yes. The things that I focused on. And it wasn't just me focusing on the thing. There was evidence around the project or around the idea. So if I'm playing basketball, right? But I'm also trading basketball cards. You can clock the hours of me actually playing basketball, watching basketball. Like I'm the person at school, you ball a sheet of paper and you throw it in the trash. We're playing these games at school. And I got better at it. So I think that's a lesson for a lot of people. Can you... Is there a lot of evidence in your whole world around this idea that you have? Ooh, because if there is evidence around this idea, do you know what that is? Talk to me. Manifestation. 
It's not, man. I'm talking about manifest. You actually... the, the verb manifest means to display or show by one's act or appearance to demonstrate. So when you sit here and you this meditate so on an idea, you think an idea and you actually do the work to get the idea, you are demonstrating. That is all manifestation that. is. That's that. it. Okay. Dang, we've been doing this for three years. We've been in this debate for three years. But the the definition that you read is not how most people look at manifestation. Well, I don't have I don't anything have to do. Conversation again. I don't. I don't. But, I don't have anything to do with what most people do. Well, we're trying. To most help people, people that, make terrible decisions. That's true. I don't allow that to impact what I believe about my decisions. Okay, you are a coach. Yes. 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 Name three things that support the fact that you are a coach that you do outside of the actual coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, three things that support number one, the fact that I have clients uh, number. Well, that's coaching. So then clarify your question. Three things outside of coaching that will support the fact that you're a coach. That will support the fact that I'm a coach every single week on this podcast. I demonstrate uh, my knowledge and expertise about business. Yep, That's one. Um, I have document documented results yep. from my clients consistently over and over again. Yep. And, um, I have established a level of authority and influence in the business world. Absolutely. And I go even a step further. Donnie has a book. She has a album that, or a song. A I have album. a, yeah. So I would have said that, but I thought that was actual coaching. No, 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 not, no, it's not. Okay, so we're talking about that. So, yes, I have a book called Makeshift Happen Now. That's where it started. Um, I have an affirmation audio, which is what David is referencing by a song. It is a song called I Am The Shift. You can get it on any platform where you listen in, um, to your music. I have courses that teach people and develop uh, people. I have um, owned and operated five different businesses successfully. Like mm -hmm. these are all things that I've done that established and, and developed me as a coach. But I've also demonstrated the result through other people, not just my own journey. Yeah. So like, I, I want everybody to really think like what are, what is even a track record of your current activity that supports the thing that you say you want to do? Mm -hmm. So some people say they're in the mental health space, but you don't do anything in the mental health space except make videos. Like you ain't got no products, no other services. It's not like you put on a, uh, you do a, 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 a Instagram live show every Monday at 10 o'clock talking about this one topic. Like there needs to be ancillary things around the topic that you say you want to do. Mm -hmm. So you're not, I'm in the podcast coaching space, but yes, I have a podcast. I have another morning meetup podcast. Me and Donnie have Brain Picker podcast. I have a podcast network. I'm putting on a podcast summit. Mm -hmm. We got a podcast course. Mm -hmm. We're doing a podcast challenge. Got a podcast webinar. Got a whole podcast presentation. Mm -hmm. These are all the things. Framework. Uh, got a whole framework. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of entrepreneurs are missing. Like, it's not just you doing it. It's there not. There got to be some things around. Even if those things around you don't make money. If you're in real estate, Okay, well, I understand you sell real estate, but do you have a real estate podcast? Mm. Do you have like a real estate journal that you can help home buyers with? Do you have mm -hmm. like a series on YouTube or something? Mm -hmm. Do you have a real estate t-shirt where you're spreading the message of uh, home ownership? Mm -hmm. Something that supports what you do. Let's talk about a couple of people that we know that are doing something at that level really well. Let's do it. Uh, let's break down Kiana Watson. Kiana, oh, 100%. Kiana Watson, who is um, a realtor. She owns her brokerage. Yep. I believe it's called Watson Realty Co. Yep. And she owns a development firm. Yep. When you think real estate. Rants and Gems podcast. Rants and Gems podcast. Anytime she's on live. She's anytime she's on estate. live. Um, she's on YouTube. I think she goes YouTube live. Whenever you land on her page, it is clear that she's a real estate broker. And guys, we're, we're going to do. I love this because. For those of you who want to break into real estate or you're doing real estate and you don't have the results that you want, like what we're doing right now is case studying people who have a level of authority and influence in their space. So if we're looking at Kiana Watson, let's everybody go to her Instagram page real quick. We're going to do this with another industry too, Dave. You think about the next person. Yeah, for sure. But let's go to Kiana Watson and it's Q-U-I-A-N-A -A Watson 
and then underscore. Um, those, as soon as you land on her page without doing too much scrolling, uh, someone with the mic near a mic, tell me, tell me what immediately what you believe she does and if you believe she does it as, at a high level, just out loud. Yeah. What makes you think she does this at a high level? Quality of the photos. I'm looking at um, the level of fashion uh, that she's, you know, uh, displaying, and also the uh, the homes, uh, the designs of the homes that uh, I'm seeing on her page. Okay. Does anything different stand out to anybody else, Kiva? Before you get to her page, even in her bio, you see that she's a luxury real estate. Um, she's in luxury real estate, and then she also acknowledged that she sold over $125 million in mm. real estate as well. Mm. Mm, so before you can even get to her page to see her pictures, you can mm. see in her bio clear what she is and how she does it and how much she sold immediately. Is this a person who looks like she knows her industry? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? What makes you think so? Who, who has something? What makes you think she knows her industry simply by landing on her page? Mm-hmm. Did you want it? Yeah. It's good. It's good. What makes you think she knows her stuff? Um, first and foremost, she's a broker. Mm -hmm. um, but then also, um, not just that, but it says that she's a mentor and that she's a developer. So when you're looking at that, but then when you're scrolling down, you see the homes mm -hmm. and you see that she's going live, even though her co cover photos are different, but she has the homes on here. She has homes with pricing on here and things of that nature. So she's not just focused on just one specific situation when it comes to real estate. She's focused on the whole aspect. I love it. Would you consider her authoritative and influential just by landing on her page? Does she look like someone who's authoritative and individual and 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 uh, influential, not considering the size of her following, not even thinking about that. Does she look like an author an authority and influence in the space of real estate? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Now look at your own page. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people that uh, it's so hard to follow. And if you scroll down on Kiana's page, like just scroll as far as you can. It's real estate. Mm -hmm. for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see a lot of people where, okay, the first nine mm -hmm. is about the thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Let's say uh, they're in the Airbnb space or they're in the, I don't know, trucking space. But if you scroll down long enough, it changes. Mm. Scroll down long enough, it changes. And you can, like, I, I think... Like really, people should take a trip down memory lane to outside of yourself to see your habits, see who you have become. Yeah. How many times did you change or did you do the same thing? Or are there periods of time where you're not promoting the thing that you say you're going to promote and it's just silly stuff, stuff that's making you laugh and your friends and all kind of weird stuff like that. Like we really got to take a step outside of us mm. and just have an idea of like, what has our t activity been for the last year or so? I love that. I love what you said so much because people struggle to build their businesses. And we, the first thing that we like to do is go look at your social media. Mm -hmm. And we like to tell you just that, Oh, you're busy. You, you want to build a business where you have to present as an authority. I don't care if you're in the fashion industry, if you're building an Amazon store and you're teaching that, you have to present yourself as an authority in that space. You want to be influential. You want people to think of you as the go-to in your space, but the only people that you have authority over are your friends. <laughs> <laughs> you have authority over your friends by, by sharing the, 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 the uh, dopest memes from... Uh, what is it, Justin L.A. Boy, mm -hmm. Justin LaBoy, I, I don't know what it is, but just, who has a tremendous amount of authority and influence. Oh, for sure. A tremendous amount of authority and influence. We're resharing things like that from pages that have established their own authority of inf and influence, and now you've just become the go-to for the meme uh, c group on social media. Like, really go and look at your page right now. Let's, 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 you have, did you have another person? I mean, we can really just go to who you just said, Justin LaBoy, mm -hmm. and just keep scrolling and see when things change. Yeah. 
It doesn't. It just doesn't. It's the same post. Where I'm at right now. I'm here in, uh, golly, July 12th. I've been. This is like last two <laughs> weeks, and it just keeps going. And he's so consistent. No wonder. No wonder. No wonder. I'm. I'm just like doing. My, I'm just keep scrolling. Just keep on scrolling. No wonder people are waiting for him to drop a new meme every five minutes. No wonder people are waiting crazy. for his next feature on a podcast and they can't wait for him to update his bio with a new YouTube link because who doesn't know who this person is? Who hasn't seen a meme shared by shared from a Justin LeBoy post? Here's what's crazy too. The format that he's posting, <laughs> anyone can post. Anyone can post. I post the same thing. We Twitter screenshot. We were posting this years ago. Literally, David, you taught me how to do this. You guys know how simple this is? You could do the same thing on a white background. I remember being at the other studio and I would be like, David, how do you do those so consistently? And he's like, yo, just take your phone, go to your story, turn on the camera, put the phone on your lap. Mm -hmm. It's going to turn black. Take a picture of that and write over it. Yep. And this person. Yeah, she was so impressed. I'm like. I was so impressed. <laughs> I was so impressed with that. This person likely went to Canva or he likely went to Google and Googled picture of a white square. He saved it to his phone. And now that's the template for every single post. But you're so worried about being different and unique and having an aesthetic that looks great and it matches your brand colors and all. white background. Yo, White background. Donnie, I've been scrolling for mad long on Justin's page and I'm only in April. Only in April. I'm only a few months ago. Like I've been like I've been doing it since we started talking, just like scrolling. Let me see. This man Justin I have, posted, a, I have a different respect for him. Because I didn't know today, it was like this. He posted one hour ago and then two hours ago and then 12 hours ago and another 12 hours ago and 13 hours ago and 17 hours ago and 19 hours ago, 20 hours ago, 21, 22. I, I just want to see 23, oh 23, 23. Okay. So in one 24 hour period, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 posts with more than 100,000 uh, likes, Bruh. which means that he probably got over a million impressions on the post. But we too worried about wearing our audience out if we talk about things that this interest us crazy. twice a day. I'm not even in last year yet. And I've been, scr I have a whole nother respect for this man. He figure out something that he can do simplistically. Now I think Simple. his head, in his head, he, he sees it like he just has one of those personalities where he just, you know, shows what he or types what he thinks. Yeah. Now, I think you have to be a special type of person to see things in a unique perspective. But he's putting out such volume that I had like I just have a whole nother respect for him. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to do all this fancy creative. You try to do your dances and all that kind of stuff. When he's like, yo, I'm going to type this screenshot post. Once I see it, type it, screenshot post, type mm -hmm. it, screenshot post. And he's so, con I got a whole nother respect for him. He's so consistent. And that's why, like, it's a mix between motivation and foolishness. But he's so consistent and he's such an influence. And you don't want to not follow him. You kind of want to see the Justin LeBoy post first or Justin LA Boy, LA Boy I don't mm. know. You want to see his post first and you want to be the first one to drop the funny, the funny meme in the group chat. Like, he has a if you want to go somewhere like seriously, the girls are talking. If you want to find a dope caption for your picture, go to Justin's page, Tracks. go to Justin's page. He got all the dope captions on his page. Let's look at one more person. We're talking and about side note. Mm -hmm. He do be stealing though. Just oh, yeah, these, are not, these are not original ideas. I posted something one time and he took that joint and made it. <laughs> Typed it on Twitter, took a screenshot. So, and I know a couple of people he just stole from, but I have a nut. I, it's not like when you put something on social media, it's yours anyway. Yeah. So the fact that he doesn't care about what you're talking about, I'm going to feed my audience. And it's not like we haven't taken something and posted it on our page, right? So we can't be too mad at him. But nah, yo, shout and out to And he's not Justin, claiming man. to be the originator of these thoughts. 100%. He's finding interesting topics that appeal to him that he knows will work for his audience. And he's repurposing that interesting topic on his own page and serving his audience. Because yep. 
he's got 8.6 million followers. There's that means that there's a million, I'm sorry, 7 million at least followers that are not connected to you that wanted to see or needed to see this message, right? Yes. But we're so focused about presentation. We're so focused about, uh, we're, he, he's got a white square and we're so focused about getting the graphic designer to design our background aesthetic. We are so focused about getting the Sony cameras instead of using that iPhone that's in our hand right now because we want such a perfect presentation. Kiva, I'm not going to shout you out, but uh, somebody in the room can feel me on this. We're so focused on it. Let's also look at another good, a good example of just some cell phone stuff. When we think about stocks, we think about somebody who is empowering us in the stock market, teaching us how to get in that. Who do you think of first? Unanimously. Unanimously. Let's go to Wall Street Trapper's page. Wall underscore street underscore trapper. You know what's interesting about that too? Um, uh, um, Trap went through a slump where his content wasn't contenting either. It mm -hmm. just wasn't engaging. Mm -hmm. Or not, it wasn't engaging, but he wasn't getting a lot of likes and you know comments and stuff like that. I remember we were talking about it. And I'm thinking, dang. Something's wrong with Instagram because yeah. Trap's posts are always lit. Mm -hmm. um, but he went through it too. But guess what he didn't stop doing? He did posting not content. stop posting. So Instagram might say, all right, well, we're not giving this person reach right now for whatever reason. But his mindset isn't let me stop. Our mindset is let's stop. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I love him as an example because we looked at Kiana who has a very well-produced page right yeah. she's got some professional camera work back there her images are super high quality high resolution but then we go over here to a wall street trapper who when you're looking at his page much of this outside of his podcast are cell phone snaps mm -hmm. cell phone images we'll look and see in the last 24 hours he has three posts on his page three post on his page and he is uh the first the most recent post from the last 24 hours he is talking about promoting his business now this person has over a million followers he's promoting one of his businesses which is his trapping tuesday webinar notice that post only got 188 likes mm -hmm. right but if you look right at the post before that He's literally also talking about education. That post was liked by 700 people. The post before that, the post is liked by 322 people. This is a period of which we can see that he's experiencing low engagement right now. He's experiencing low engagement. He's got 21,000 views, 95,000 views. What does he not stop doing? Posting. He does not stop posting. We're talking about an eight-figure brand owner, eight-figure brand owner who has over one million followers. And you see he has posts on here that gets a million views, 891,000 plays, uh, 100,000 plays, 300,000 plays. But on these days where he's only getting 21,000, his 21,000 plays are your 300 plays. Mm-hmm. They're your 300 plays on a platform this large, but what is he not doing? And then what did he not lose? His, his consistency, his momentum, but most importantly, his authority. Does this make him any less of an authority? Does, his, does this make him any less impactful to you? No, this is an algorithm thing. This is a timing thing. This is an understanding that when we're promoting our business specifically, that we're going to get a lot less engagement than when we're just giving free game. Free game, you're getting all the free game that helps somebody reach especially a monetary result, you're getting all the engagement. Game that you're throwing out here, like putting men and women against each other, breaking up relationships, you're getting all the engagement. But that stuff that's just promoting like, oh, that podcast, that is uh, focused on like men against women and men should be this and women should be that. They're going to get hundreds of thousands of likes and views, but they drop a course to teach you how to do a podcast. They're going to get 300. Guess what? They're not going to stop doing though. Posting. Yeah. I'm going to send, I'm going to send you something. I want you to, I want you to read it. It's a screenshot from a text message that I received uh, on July 7th uh, from my man words. And I just want you to look at it. Right. And it, it, it really, it really shook my world, right? So we got this podcast summit coming up 
and we've been promoting. We've been promoting, right? But uh, read what do you what do you say? He sent Dave a screenshot of his own page, the first 12, uh, 15 posts. And his message was, what says I'm having a summit in less than 30 days? David said, nothing about to post. Meaning, yo, you're putting on a whole large production in 30 days and not one of these posts that I see have anything to do with that podcast summit. What's up? What's good? Let me tell you, let me tell you why this really shook me because I want engagement on my page and I want people to come to the page and say, yo, I want to follow this person. But once you start promoting something, you, you're looked at as somebody that's always promoting something or you're looked at as somebody that's always selling something, which means I care more about the aesthetics than the money. So we don't want to, we don't want to promote the thing because it just looks too promotional and we're too cool and we want our page to look pretty. I want people to go through and get value, 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 value. But I, less than 30 days and I'm not really pushing. I'm, I'm trying to rely on ads. We're running ads. I'm doing a webinar. We're trying to rely on that. But when people need to know, the thing that I want them to focus on when they think about me is this summit coming up and I'm not doing that. So I said, oh, I'm willing to trade the money for likes. Mm. And then I'm realizing now that uh, if you're running ads, they don't give you as much organic reach. So that's probably why trap stuff is down right now because you're running ads. And they're like, oh, this person's paying for reach. Why we give them some? I'm just having them keep paying, right? So this is just what I'm noticing. When we stop running ads, we'll probably, the engagement will probably go way up. I know traps run a lot of ads right now. Yeah. So obviously the engagement is going down. But the question is, what do we want to trade? Do you want to trade the sales of your business? Because I, I, would rather, I would rather two people buy from me out of the 30 likes than I got 30,000 likes, 30,000 views, and nobody buys a thing. They just think I'm cool. So that joint really shook me. He said, what about you on your page says you got an event coming up? Mm. The answer was nothing. But we can go to my page now. Then we'll go to my page. Let's go to my page. Go to Sleep is for Suckers. It's I got the 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 flyer posted. Um obviously I just dropped an uh, interview today. The third one in black and white is Ryan editing a intro talking about what it's an intro for the summit. And we collaborate on that right at right before that is uh, Earn Your Leisure, talking about the coming to the summit. Um, I did an interview with Kevin, um, I forgot how to say his name, but he's a really, really cool podcaster. He has the Grow the Show podcast. Bef right after, right before that, another promotion, ranking on podcasts, top podcasts. Somebody else talking about podcasts. We got uh, uh, Tori Gordon, who's coming to the podcast summit. You're not going to screenshot me and tell me that I ain't got, I'm not promoting. Not another time. Not a, not another again. Not only not not nay another time. <laughs> not only can I see that you um, that you are putting on a podcast summit, but I can actually tell that you are really serious about podcasting. Mm -hmm. I can actually tell that you're a podcaster. I'm landing on this page and I'm looking and I'm I'm seeing the visuals and I immediately just want to click around and see what this is about. Immediately, okay. what about you? Go to your own social media right now. Everybody who's watching or listening to this, go to your social media right now. And here's here's the crazy thing. I got 305,000 followers, and these posts are getting 77 likes, 64 likes, 88 likes. If I'm looking at the like stuff, if I'm not looking at it from the perspective that Donnie just talked about, mm -hmm. and I'm saying, oh, somebody will come on and say, I'm serious about this thing. If I'm only looking at it from, oh, well, people don't feel that anymore, mm -hmm. then I would probably stop posting altogether until the algorithm fixes itself. Yeah. Or I'm going to start just going into value content mm -hmm. that doesn't lead people to the destination that I want to take them. Well, and not only would you have a shift in your content, that would ultimately result in you 
not having another summit. Mm. It would shake you to your core because Come maybe on. I don't have the authority that I thought I had. Maybe I don't have the influence that that I thought I have. People are not resonating with the post. They don't like it. But how many people are going to be at the summit? Come on. Oh, it's always oh, lit. <laughs> how many people are going to be oh, at the summit? That <laughs> right? That joint's about to be Right? Crazy. Are people, are anybody in here going to the summit? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. I like yes. That. You will talk yourself out of your dream because you don't post or you aren't prepared or it's not pretty enough or it's not clear enough or the aesthetic isn't giving enough. You will literally talk yourself out of the dream that could change your life today. By continuing to wait on this thing, continuing to wait on somebody else, continuing to wait on a team. I don't have a team. A team to do what? <laughs> what? No, seriously. Seriously, I don't have a team. To do what? Put your phone on a tripod and hit record? You know, when I post videos, when I make my own content, because I have a team and I still make a, a lot of my own content, if I'm doing something, I put my phone on a tripod, I press record, I run to the area that I need to be at, but that's after I practice and mark the area, Right. Like I set the phone up first. I go check it. Can I see myself? Yep. Am I in the frame? Head to toe. Do I have it? Yes. Then I go back. Stop that video because I don't want to have to trim that much off. I hit record, run back in my position, say whatever I want to say. And then I go back and stop it. And I come back and do the second part and I go back and stop it and come. And I sit there and I trim off the parts of me running back and forth to create this content. And then I go and upload it into a reel and put my words on it. That is my content that is connecting and converting and have my sales calendar full five days a week because mm. we only take calls five days a week. Come on. Come on. That's what I'm doing. I'm not. Do you think if I had to wait for a Zell or a Reese to get on their schedule when they're working around David and every and clients and customers and all of this stuff, I wouldn't have a business to run a team for what? Obviously, when you grow to a certain level, you get a team to help things become more convenient and easier. But we we didn't start with a team. When, when David started the podcast and when I joined, even when I joined at episode, I think 50, the control board for recording, like we're sitting here, the control board's right here, right on the side. And Dave's like, okay, you ready? Yep. Ready. Okay. Psh. We wait a couple of seconds because that's the trim time. And then we go, <laughs> right? Press record, get in position, go. Just trim off that little part from the hand moving from the board to this. If something went like when we were done, guess what happened when we finished podcasting and we had like two cameras at that time, one on him, one on me. It was like, actually it was, was it just one? one at that time? It was one. We eventually graduated. We were, we were in the same <laughs> shot. One, no angles that, that little switch that you just saw. Do, go back, Reese, that, 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 go, come back, come back, Reese. That. This, it wasn't this, it was not this. It was one camera perfectly positioned to get both of us from a mm -hmm. far enough angle, but close enough so you could see us. And guess what? We had to get up, press record. David's on the machine doing this thing. I'm in there putting wires together. I'm like, Dave, can I help with something? No, Donnie, just sit down. I'm going to help do something. Remember that? Like I'm putting wires and cord. And then eventually a Javon came. And then eventually a Reese came. And then eventually a Zell came. But if we never started doing it on our own, nobody came. Nobody comes. No opportunity is created. No authority is established. No influence is made. None of this could happen if we didn't run to the camera, press record, run back to our seat and just start. Yeah. And we're not even talking about just social media stuff. No. What about you says you do this? Or what about you says you're serious about this? Mm -hmm. mm. You know, ever, like from the very beginning, people knew I was serious because I it wasn't nobody else there. Like they're like, yo, you set all this stuff up? Yes. I'm serious. I'm very, very serious. serious. Outside, outside of what people see on social media, will Deja say that Donnie is serious about entrepreneurship and building a business? Not, not social media stuff. The people around you in your space, will they say that you are serious? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. We need to really take that into consideration. My children will tell you Daddy is serious. Mm -hmm. Look, Corey's normally up here every day. She'll never be able, if, if he, even if I'm not in the room, it's not to impress me. Like, if she's talking to her friend, she probably, my daddy always working. Mm -hmm. He always creating content, always want me to be there. Mm 
Yeah. Creating co- because I'm serious. I'm serious. So I really want you to like really assess your own activity. Do your friends say that you're the life of the party? Or do they say she's serious? Like she she might co- are they surprised when you walk into the party because they expect it they think Bruh. that you're so serious that you're my friends they don't even think to invite me places anymore and it'd be pissing me off. <laughs> like right. invite me every single time For anyway. Sure. But they're always like, Donnie, you're so focused. You're, you're working. You're doing this. We didn't think you'd come. Invite me anyway. I appreciate that you understand that I am so focused and so serious about what I do. Like do your, do your friends even think you're serious? Do your parents think you're serious? Does your significant other think you're serious? Do you think your significant other is serious? Yeah, I, I don't even call. It'd be stuff I want to like. I, like I'm real last minute. I'm like a last minute person. And there's some stuff that I want to ask Donnie to go to and do, but it'd be like, it's like a couple hours away and I don't ask her anymore because her schedule is so tight. Like she doesn't do like last minute stuff. Now I think I can probably catch her sometimes like she'll actually go or do it. But because I've known her for years, I know that if it's not on the count, like if it's not, if, it, if it's not something I want, to be on her calendar, something else is in that spot, for sure. But I'm gonna start inviting you though. I'm when more. when I see the opportunity happening and I didn't get the invite, I'm pissed. Right. <laughs> like, don't arrange my schedule for me right. <laughs> because this was the one time I could have made something shake, right? For sure. But no, like you understand, like I'm serious about how I run my business. Even like if we're being transparent with team and stuff and, you know, showing up here, being here, being on time, doing this. Don't let me have to ask for X, Y and Z. It's I'm serious about how I run my business. Does your team who has employees? Anybody got team? No, you do. Does your team know that you're serious? Do you got Reese? K? do y'all know David is serious? Like we understand that we're creating an environment and here, here's what it is. Honestly, as a, as a, as an employer, a lot of it is wanting to be respected. Like you would respect other people's companies. A lot of it is wanting to be taken seriously. Like you would take your corporate job at Apple or your corporate job at Chick-fil-A. You wouldn't dare be late. If you understood that their late policy was three times and it's a wrap. You wouldn't dare give certain excuses if they set the tone that that's just not going to be allowable and acceptable here. So when you are an entrepreneur and you're working with team, you have to establish right out of the gate. Like, I'm so serious about this. And it's not that I'm giving you a hard time. But do you know how hard I work to be in a position to be somebody's employer in the first place? I'm serious. And I need you to be serious, too. For sure. Any, any, anybody want to share? Anybody want to share? Think about, just think about your life, your activity, things you got going on. How serious? Scale of one to five. How serious? Ella, because. Five. five, like I am. Scale to one to five? I scale to one to five. I yeah. say a 4.5. 4.5? Yeah. Okay. And I have my moments where I'm just like, I just want to take a step back. Yeah. And it, if it starts to feel overwhelming, but there's never a moment where people can't say, I'm not being consistent in the things that I'm doing, the t- actions I'm taking, the the sales calls that I'm, I'm I'm looking to book or I did book. There's never a moment where, like my friends, like Donnie said, my friends they they text me like, "Are you going to be available?" Yeah. Well, now no because I'm I'm 10, 12 hours away from you. I used to be closer, definitely. But even then, there's moments where there were I was like, "No, I got work to do." That's a fact. So. I love it. Who Anybody else? else? Yes. It's so crazy, man. Like some people really have the, uh, it's actually fair. The way success works is very fair. You know what I mean? The people who work for it, get it. The people who don't, don't. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like the audacity that you have to think that you don't have to do what everybody else is doing and you want to get the same results. Mm -hmm. We think successful people, oh, well, they're successful already, so of course they're getting engagement. Of course they're selling out events. Yeah. Well, look at how hard the people that are winning work. Mm-hmm. So Trap is working 10 times harder than you, but you're blaming it on the fact that he has a following already. Well, how do you think he got the following? Yeah. It's the work ethic. <laughs> yeah. It's fair. The world, life is fair, in my opinion. It's fair. Mm-hmm. Whatever you, If you're willing to work for it and 
have measured work, meaning you work, step back from the work. How did that work out? Oh, it wasn't good. How can I fix it? Oh, this part worked. Let me do that again. Let me get some other people involved. Let me work on my leadership. Let me work on my ability to communicate. You'll win. If you don't, you won't. And then you'll say life isn't fair. And, you know, even even with a trap, trap has put in the hours, the hours, the hours, the hours, the hours. And even when he reached a, a point where he wanted to take his business to the next level and and he wanted to be in alignment and make sure he was doing it correctly, guess what he did? Somebody as successful as a Wall Street trapper, guess what he did? He hired a business coach. Guess who his first business coach was? Al. Me. <laughs> had, to, had to put that out there. But no, seriously, it's like people who are achieving an insane amount of success. Guys, really put the pieces together. This is a puzzle. This is a puzzle. There's a picture of what your vision looks like in your head. Are you are you creating the pieces, though? Like you see the full picture, but do you have all the pieces or have some of your pieces fallen under the bed? Have some of your pieces fallen out of the box and you hadn't put them in? Are you letting somebody play with your pieces and they didn't put them back and so now you can't complete your vision? Mm. Is is that what's happening? Like you're letting somebody take your, they're playing with your vision, they're playing with you. They're taking some pieces out. Engagements down, pieces disappearing. Somebody in your circle not believing in what you got going on, that piece has been removed. You're not believing those, that cluster of pieces have been removed. And over time, the pieces have been gone so long that you don't even know where to find them. So you got to start over from scratch and reimagine the vision and start putting those pieces back together again. There is a formula for that. This is really a puzzle that you're putting together piece by piece by piece. And you can't let you or anybody else, your lack of work ethic, your lack of belief, somebody else's lack of belief, somebody's lack of interest, somebody's lack of engagement. You can't let anybody rob you of your pieces because you need them all. Yeah. You need them all. Absolutely. Scale of one to five. What? Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I say about a four. Um, I mean, I'm very serious, but I feel like sometimes, like, it's a lot of distractions. So I feel like, you know, I can kind of veer off sometimes, you know, like when it comes to, like, doing other stuff like traveling and stuff like that. But I would say, you know, overall, I'm pretty focused. Um, and then, like, what y'all were saying earlier about the social media thing, like, that was so, like, that was so eye-opening. Because, like, you know, I've, I've never really heard it like the way y'all just broke it down. You know what I'm saying? With the engagement and stuff, but you're supposed to like continue to post. Like, I mean, I say I do a pretty good job. I post like once a day, but I feel like I could post a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, but like the only reason I'm not posting like a lot more is because of what you just said. Like thinking about the engagement, the likes and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. 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 Who's next? I would say a four. Um, only because I do what I need to do for myself on the back end to develop myself. So I took the time to go to school for my topic for my podcast. So I'm actually getting two master's degrees in what my podcast is focusing on. Mm -hmm. um, I read books outside of that um, in the mental health space to help people. I'm a social worker full time. So personally, I do what I need to do. So my friends are like, oh, yeah, you're serious. That one is the fact that I'm waiting on everything to be perfect before actually putting it out there. Yeah. So the knowledge and everything, the topics, the the structure is packaged tight on the back end. And I'm just like, okay, so how do I bring it out? So for me, that one of just throwing it out there is waiting on perfection. But my friends are like, oh, so I can't curse around you. I'm like, no, like we're good. They're like, well, you go to Bible college. I'm like, I do, but I do it to help people you know, look and envision God in a different way. So when people approach me, they approach me as, you know, what I'm doing, but it's just me getting in my own way and waiting on perfection to step and just really go forth. So the whole social media thing, the iPhone and the camera, mm -hmm. um, and the whole team situation. So for me, understanding that is just setting up a podcast and just saying what I need to say. Yeah. And I recorded three videos yesterday since I... Uh, our our day yesterday, just introducing myself and jumping into that space. So. You know, you know what's interesting too. The um, I think our own scale is going to be subjective, right? So if I had to give myself a number, I'd probably give myself like a three. Even though, like, I really go hard. There's a lot of time that I take off. 
You know what I mean? Because I just love being with my babies. Like, they went to Six Flags a day, and I'm sick. I really, I really want to go. And if I, if we had, didn't have the summit coming up, I would go, right? But I think we all know our, our, our own capabilities, and I know I'm capable of accomplishing so much more. Mm -hmm. So my three is someone else's eight. Yeah. But we've been in the we've been in the grind so long. We got systems and process. I wake up same time every single morning. Uh, wake up at six thirty. Hit my snooze button. Get up at six thirty nine. I read my book. Decide what we're going to prepare for the uh, for the morning meetup. Then I jump on the call. Then I head to the studio. People are like yo, you going to call every day? Well, I mean, it's not that hard. You might look at it as difficult, but it's not that. I mean, I could be doing more. I could wake up a little earlier, go to the gym then come back and then read. I could stay here a little longer. Like even the time frame that I'm here, like we can really be more productive. Like there's so many different things that we could do. So I'm, I feel like I'm almost coasting, but we're all, our own. some people are gonna say, yo, I'm giving it everything I got and it's a five. And I look at those people like, that is interesting. You're doing all that you can, impossible. Maybe you're doing all that you can based on what your mind will allow you to do yeah. because you're rewarding yourself for having a checklist of three things that are easy to do. You say, yo, I took it to the max today. Yeah. And a few of those things are things that you had to do anyway, that you already had scheduled, knocked it out. Oh, I went hard. Interesting. Yeah. I've, I've had seasons where I literally and honestly can say I've given it everything that I had seasons, yeah. but that is not the behavior seven days a week, for sure. 24 hours a day. Um, I too would give a three. Yeah. I too would give a three because- so much harder, bro. I could go so much harder. We could be going so much harder together. Yeah. We could be going, we could be doing, you know, so much more individually, but, you know, and, and we have so many ideas, although so much harder ideas are written down. Yeah. Um, we have it. I was one of those people who used to say to you, I hadn't in the last- two-ish years like why are you getting on this call every single day and it's not even a matter of why you're getting on the call every single day I just I felt like uh, why are you getting on this call every single day at that price right and because the first price was just it, <laughs> obscene um but over time like it what someone said to me recently when I launched my community like um you don't really want to do that. You don't you don't want to be the mentor in your community because you don't want to have to be confined to fulfillment to people, right? And I said, well, if I didn't do it in my community, I'd be on Instagram going live for free. For sure. If you weren't on these morning meetup calls because this is in you, not on you, you'd be literally on social media every single day for free. And I know it's a fact because you still be on social media every single day for free. Yeah. Like we literally be doing this for free. So when people say things like, oh, I don't want to back myself into having to be somewhere every single day. Well, you don't you be somewhere every single day anyway? Let like that job offer you a little more money. You'll be there every day. If the job offered you a little bit more money, you'd be every you'd be there every single day. We're willing to be there every single day when it conveniences us. But going hard is too inconvenient. So we back off a little bit and then we try to convince ourselves through to-do list and things like that, that we are actually at a 4.5 when you really at a 1.5 because <laughs> the quality of those things on that to-do list are, are, aren't even measurable. Like go check the mail, <laughs> go open the bank account. Like <laughs> another one, Register for what? LLC. right? Like go get the LLC. Like, yes. Is that a step for sure? Is that going hard? No. Clean my office. Clean the office. I'm exhausted. I got it. We're ready now. Organize the files on my desktop. <laughs> it's not going hard. Like when we're thinking about what going hard really means, going hard is like the extra hours you spend strategizing your funnel and actually doing it, not writing it down, but figuring it out. Going hard is when you can't figure out a tech issue and you don't have the money to pay somebody to figure out a tech issue. And you're up at three o'clock in the morning chatting with that with that system's uh, chat line you can't talk to them you're frustrated you're chatting until you figure it out that's going hard going hard is you're taking
taking all the sales calls because you don't have anybody else to do it. So all these sales calls are on your calendar because you have to create revenue. That is going hard. Going hard is going into these trade shows time after time after time again, just to drum up leads instead of just sitting on Instagram making videos. That's going hard. Like, what are you doing to go hard to say, hello, I am here. I am available. My doors are open. That's going to yield a result. Going hard is measurable. Absolutely. And pass, pass that comfort zone. Pass what's comfortable. If you had a productive day and at the end you're like, ooh, that was good. We killed it. You probably didn't go hard. You were productive. You're productive. But you didn't go I'm hard. Talking, I'm talking about one of them days like, yo, it's so much stuff. I'm, like, I'm, I'm frustrated. I'm fl- Meetings back to back and I set it up that way and I'm crushing it. In between time, I'm going to get things done. Like one of those, I, this was a very uncomfortable day. I can't even celebrate my productivity because I want to go to sleep. I want to go to sleep. I am done. I am tired. Yeah, if you wake up and you look at your calendar and you don't regret every single thing on that calendar, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you are you are too comfortable. <laughs> sure, sure. You are too comfortable. I wake up seventy percent of the day. And be like, how on earth did I commit to this today? Mm. How on earth did I say I could knock this stuff out? Like, why would I do this to myself? Because (laughs) I do it to myself. But, but I have a result that people dream of. I go hard. And here's the thing. It's not that your idea isn't good. It's not that you have, that you don't have access to information. It's not that you don't even have access to resources and tools. It's just, you haven't accepted that that there's a period that I need to go hard. You're accepting the baby steps. And so when I'm talking about baby steps not always being good enough, it's not always good enough. There is a season in which baby steps represent movement, and that's great. Mm -hmm. But there is a season that you got to go hard. When David had those T-shirts and he's popping up at every conference, every club, every this, every that, just to get the brand out there, just to get somebody to wear the shirt for free, that's going hard. When David was running around the city of Atlanta or wherever he's driving and traveling to with these T-shirts in the trunk of his car and popping out at gas stations and seeing people who might be interested in wearing these shirts and he's not afraid to do it. And even if he is afraid, he's doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. That's going hard but you want your t-shirt line to pop because you put a cute design on a black gilding t-shirt and you threw it on shopify Uh, and you think that it's supposed to sell stop playing (laughs) stop playing what you got (laughs) so last week i had my point where i was stretched and i i almost broke down and i was like you know what i had to retract myself from out of the whole picture like this is what i needed to do for that growth period so i was like god you know what i know you're stretching me I asked you to stretch me, and I'm here for it. So I had to, you know, I I started feeling good after that. I was like, okay, I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this little L, but I know the big picture that he has for me. And, like, when you talked about the puzzle, I look at it like God's vision for us is an entire puzzle, and we have certain pieces that fit into that puzzle. Mm -hmm. And so when you were talking about that, I was like, yes, it makes so much sense because we don't know the people that we meet, the avenues, the opportunities that we have, they're part of the puzzle for the bigger picture like yeah. with that social proof every piece up there is a part of life that we went through and so it was just amazing at that moment Facts. Yeah. i made a uh, i made a post uh, the other day it said what have i gotten myself into that's a phrase I use at least twice per year after I invested a lot of time, money, and resources into one of my big ideas. Yes. Where you're like, yo, what have I gotten myself into? Yeah. And uh, many people never experience that. Yeah. Like going past like yeah. what's comfortable for you. What's you comfortable I mean? for you. We want you to do something this week that's very uncomfortable. I want you to do that thing. Like I want you to write out the list of what you actually need to do to either launch this idea or take this idea to the next level. You probably already have it written out. Like you kind of have an idea in your mind and I want you to stop waiting for it to be the perfect time. Or I want you to stop waiting to have the perfect people. And I want you to do that thing that makes you uncomfortable. So for you, that might be telling everybody consistently twice a day for seven days straight, you have this business. This is what it is. I'm posting about it intentionally. For some of you, it might be going live every single day, seven days straight to inform people, to show up and tell people what, what it is that you do and talk about topics that are relevant to your audience. For some of you, it might be delegating some things that you need to delegate so you can be made free 
more often, more, more easily to do other things in your business. For some of you, it may be realizing that you don't have anything to de- anybody to delegate something to and you got to do it. For some of you, it's tackling that tech issue. For some of it, for some of you, it's creating your first logo. For some of you, it's mm-hmm. p- creating your first marketing strategy, but not just creating the strategy, but actually doing it. For some of you, it's just letting your voice be heard. For some of you, it's asking for the opportunity. For some of you, it's asking for the support over and over and over again what is the thing that can drive your business forward that you have not been doing because deep down inside you're afraid to do it or it's too hard or it doesn't look comfortable or it's not glamorous what is that thing comment and this week i want you to do it yes you're gonna do it you have an idea in your head what it is okay all right cool hey uh we got some stuff coming up Mm -hmm. Uh, can we so we're launching it, so it's ready now. It's ready now. Is it ready now? Well, is this dropping this week? I mean, it's dropping tomorrow. <laughs> which is it drops later today. We just finished. We just finished. Um, we just came back from the podcast summit. We just came back from the podcast yep, summit. It was amazing. Y'all, did y'all love the podcast summit? <laughs> <laughs> What I find really interesting for anybody who pays any bit of attention earlier, we asked people if they were going to the podcast (laughs) summit, (laughs) but by the time you see this episode, what's important is that we just came back from the podcast summit. And because this is a room full of manifestors, we already know podcast summit was up. Did we love it? Yes, 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 yes. (laughs) And we did a thing at podcast summit. We We did a thing. You guys, David and I have really been meditating on the thought of she's been meditating I've been how we can help people become unafraid and overdeveloped in their specific niche, how we can help you create a voice, how you can how we can match you with an offer that makes sense for you. Not the offer that you think you want right now because it looks like it's working for other people. But what is what what is your unique offer? What is your offer mastery? And then once we figure that out, how do you become a person of influence in a way that people actually want this from you? How are we going to get your podcast launched, but not just get your podcast launched, but create anticipation and you got people already waiting to watch it? How are you going to put your offer out there and people cannot wait to buy it? How do you become a person with such authority and influence that before you even release the link? People are asking you, how can they buy? How can they join? How can they watch? How can they support? We understood that the thing that was missing for so many people was the actual authority and the actual influence. Like you got a really dope idea. You have a really dope sound. You have a really dope voice. You have a really dope aesthetic. You have a really dope skill set. You have a really dope collection of information. But the thing is, you have no authority and no influence. And guys, Mm. You're not always born with this. This is a taught thing via experiences, via experience. You're either people think you're born with it because you have parents who set you up on that right path. You have parents that put you in front of opportunities that help you build influence over time. Or you get into a friend group. You ever knew like the lame who got into a friend group and now he the man or she's the woman <laughs> because of her environment. Right. You, you thought they were so lame in high school or college, but now they're that person, that authority and that influence was molded and it was developed and crafted over a period of time. But now we're grown people that have all these bright ideas, but we're lacking the confidence. We're lacking the ability. We're lacking uh, the ability to communicate and connect with people and make them really see like, Hey, I know this stuff too. It needs to be my time. We want to help you. We want to help you to develop that and free you from the lack of it. For sure. I have a mastermind uh, teaching people podcasting and content creation. Mm -hmm. Uh, Donnie has a mastermind where she's teaching people business, how to build like business structure, how to get to the money. And we were doing them separately, which my clients got great results. Our clients got great results, but we were thinking, yo, what if we can teach people um, 
how to build a business, how to build a brand, and how to continually show up on people's timeline. Mm. If we can really put all of this stuff together um, and really build a family uh, community, yeah. there's going to be a lot of people that make a lot of money. Listen, this is the year of collaboration, yeah. and we're showing you that. Listen, we can come to you can if we can come together and collaborate mm -hmm. with someone and affect the masses. So can you. Mm -hmm. It's not like one plus one equals two. It's like one plus one equals ten. Yeah. But if we can show you how to connect with other people that are in the same space and you want a true mastermind that is really, really connected with people that show up every day, this ain't us just giving you to our team or you watching a bunch of videos, but we really, really want to help you and affect you in a real, real unique way. So um, we have a link in mm -hmm. this bio mm -hmm. to schedule a... So <laughs> we have a link in the bio that's going to give you more information because what we're doing is dropping a series of releases. So literally by the time you just saw this, we will have released this at the podcast summit and these individuals would have been able to already get started. The thing is, we are operating this in cohorts. So it's not going to it's not one of those uh, masterminds that you'll or communities that you'll be able to join whenever you feel like it. We are literally launching this in cohorts. And for the very first cohort, we're only accepting 50 people. That's the number right now. All of the resources and activities, we really have to strategize uh, the ability to do more. But but at this time, we're only we're only going for 50 people in the first cohort. You will have the opportunity uh, to work with David and I simultaneously. So you're going to see the link in our bio, complete the information there if you are interested. But let me assure you of this because you're wondering. I bet that cost a lot. A lot is relative. And if you think it's a lot, it is. Uh, I think it's a lot. But I'm also willing to invest in myself a lot. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I understand how investments in myself have produced 10 times more than the investment will. So I say that because this is for the person who's ready to elevate and take their business, their authority and their influence to the next level right away. If you are still a beginner and you're still not comfortable investing in yourself at a high level, you are still having to be convinced to do something. We have opportunities available for you. It's just that this is not it. OK, this is not it. The authority and influence program is not it. So we want you to be really, really, really um, ready, ready to work because we David and I don't put out fluff programs. You will never have finished my program or his and say I didn't learn something. There wasn't value there. So this is for uh, people who are really ready to to elevate and elevate quickly. Yeah, And it is it, it's going to it costs a lot, but not in money. Like, even if you have the money, you're ready to invest, and you're like, okay, I, I'm, I'm at a point where I want to invest in myself. Investing money in yourself isn't the biggest investment. <laughs> By far. Like, it's going to take time and work, and we're going to ask you to do some things. Like, we're going we're gonna to require some things from you. So if you're just like, we really, really don't want people in messing up our uh, success ratios messing up our results mm -hmm. so if you're not willing to do the work just like go back to like making your videos on instagram or like selling you you know whatever you sell and making your excuses and not going hard and thinking you're a five and you're not going hard with a five and the people that know they're at a one and you're not willing to do anything and you think we are going to make you successful that is not the case mm -mm. we are going to assist you we are going to assist you nobody can make me successful I had to decide that I was going to go in the studio and figure out how to set up these cameras. No mastermind was going to get put that inside of me. You understand what I'm saying? So, like, you have to be ready to take your life to another level. If that is you and there's a burning desire, then definitely um, click the link. It, it will give you uh, some directions. But I'm really, really excited. I'm about super this. excited about this. And what's what's exciting about it, um, what's exciting about it, number one, is the fact that we're doing it, yeah. right? Um, and, and I love how we con consistently grow our journey by sharing our journey. Mm -hmm. Like we consistently show people today what we were doing yesterday, but also what we're doing today, yeah, right? 100%. Also what we're doing today. And we consistently 
keep up with what's on trend and, and we're showing you these things in real time, but we're being intentional about working with a group of 50 people. And you don't know this yet. Um, I probably should have shared this with you before I put it on the link, but we're working with 50 people for four months. Mm. <laughs> Mm, interesting. I'll smile. <laughs> <laughs> because if I told you it was going to be so much back in, you know how you say, when I have an idea, I just run with it. And then I invite people to the idea. Yes. I just had to run with it because you and I would have been stuck on. No, it should only be for 30 days. And then I'm like, but David, maybe yeah. we can we do 90 days. Yeah, 100%. Um, but I felt like, uh, I felt like, I felt like four months is the magic number now. And, and that's this first cohort. We may get in there and say, oh, we could have knocked this out in 60 days, yeah. um, th three, two months, three months or whatever. But it, it's it's I, I feel like what do you think about that? I trust you. OK, yeah, I, I, you. I think four months is a is a realistic period of time where people are going to walk out with something tangible in your hands. Yeah. Um, whether it's your podcast, whether it's your coaching and consulting business, whether it's your framework for how you're running the business of your podcast behind the scenes is this is this is not for people who just purchase David's podcast course uh, or it could be for you. Uh, but this is not this is not that this is not a course. OK, this is not a course. This is not, um, you know, if you have the course, if you still got to kind of be convinced and you want to start with his podcast course, start with my six figure accelerator. This is for people who want access and they want information faster uh, at, at a faster level. But you also want to kind of go through this is not hand holding either, but you want accountability kind of step by step by step. So you have a complete process because a lot of times what happens, Dave, is people start the podcast but they don't know how to monetize it. They don't know how to create offers that kind of comp are complementary of that podcast. Or you create an offer, but you don't understand how to leverage uh, non-conventional marketing uh, strategies like podcasting and things like that to grow your offer. You don't know yet how to turn your voice into a seven-figure brand. Yeah, that's what we're doing. That's what we're helping you with. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. It's going to be, yo, we've been working on this for like six months. There's been so many like little details to make sure that we can, um, we can really, really service at a really high level. This ain't like we bring in a hundred, 200 people. It's very intentional uh, where we get to know everybody and their business because you know, typically here's what y'all may or may not know. It's two or three things four max that you need to change about your business that will completely explode everything that you're doing. Yeah. It's not a dozen. Mm -hmm. It's like a few things that you just, it's just blind spots that you just don't see. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are going to assist with that. So I'm excited. Yeah. That was a nice little eight minute ad. That was, that was, what? that was, that was. That was. Okay. Well, does, does that sound like something you guys need? Yeah. 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 Sound like something you need. I just want to know if it sounds like a need. I didn't ask you if you were buying it, but yeah. is it, a, is it at least a need? Yeah. Yeah. Would it would it serve? These are more advanced strategies that you will than you will find in his course or mine. For sure. It's more advanced. And the reason for it is um, she over there looking at me like I just bought your course. <laughs> you got to start. Right. You got to start. The reason for it is if we wrapped some of these strategies into just a course, they would go way over your head yeah. and it would become overwhelming and you may or may not execute them well. Right. This is really this is this is mentorship and coaching on a whole other level. And we, we got some other cute things that are wrapped in there, yeah. um, like the like the um, opportunity to partner partner with us, yes. the opportunity to partner with yeah. us, the experiences, the live experiences that we're going to do. I'm super anytime we get together, it's a good time. Yeah. Um, but those those live experiences. But I'm 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 insanely deeply interested in these partnership opportunities and collaborations um, that only the people that from within that community are going to have yeah. access to. So let's get it. Y'all better show out, click that link. Um, All that right. link is David and Donnie.com. Please don't put an E on my name. It does not exist. It's David and Donnie <laughs> D O N N I dot com. I think we need to meet. We need to have a meeting. I think I need to just buy David and Donnie with an E.com and forward it anyway. Hey, go into my, uh, GoDaddy account and buy, David and Donnie with an e.com. My credit card is already on file. 
And we're going to forward that domain to the right David and Donnie because no matter how many times I say there's no E on my name. Our friends be putting E on your name too, which is crazy. Like y'all so disrespectful. Listen, we love you all. Hey, do us a favor. Do yourself a favor. Subscribe. If you're listening to this or watching this, hit the little follow button on your podcast app. Hit the subscribe button on YouTube if you're watching it on video. And share this. Share this with five people that you know need it. Okay? Just take the link. Share it. And say, hey, I want you to check this out. Share this with five people that you know need it. Okay? So, are we out of here? We are out. See you guys next week. Peace. Bye. If you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.